Hey, it's Mika. So, you guys might notice that for the next month or so, my uploads are sort of weird. Um, I'm not going to be doing my regular uploads this month, because I've joined Voice Team. And that means that I'm already very busy making podfix to complete the challenges. And I'll be posting them all on my YouTube channel, just like I did last year. Although hopefully, I'll be able to do more this year. So expect those instead. Um, the one I'm doing for this video is the no makeup challenge, which is when I record a podfic without making any edits whatsoever, just one take. So even this intro is one take. <laughs> and the fic I've chosen to do for this is a hair raising experience. Oh, there's my lunch alarm. Great. <laughs> I already ate, don't worry about it. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Anyway, I'm gonna start the podfic now. <clears throat> A Hair Raising Experience by Lily Penwilder. Read by Peony Podfix. The villain's hand reaches for Asui. Call me Suyu. And Izuku's mind conjures up an image of his classmate disintegrating to nothing. Just like what happened to the skin of Aizawa Sensei's elbow. The hand makes contact, all five fingers pressing onto Suyu's face. And the villain lets out a long sigh, as nothing happens. You really ought to call a razor head. His words are low, almost a mumble meant for his ears alone, but for once, it isn't Izuku's feet that are moving without him thinking. I... I know, right? Even knowing that he'd be outnumbered against this many villains and how unsuited his fighting style and quirk after this kind of drawn-out battle, he still didn't hesitate to jump in just so we could escape. It, it's honestly a testament to your training that you were even able to land a hit on him. N not that I'm trying to imply anything about your skill level, I'm genuinely impressed is all. Did you time it for when he would blink? That would honestly make more sense than simply rushing at him without any protective gear or weapons, though you clearly rely on your quirk as a weapon. Still, it isn't often that the leader jumps into the fray himself and even manages to land such a devastating blow without taking any damage of his own. Th that's pretty amazing if you think about it. Especially since you can't be much older than we are and you're already worthy of leading such a huge undertaking. Most villains that hang back when the villain... Most villains that hang back when the battle starts are doing it because their forces are just cannon fodder to hide the fact that they themselves are powerless, but you were watching for an opening the whole time, right? Have you seen a raise head in action before, or was this the first time? It's as Izuku pauses his ramble for a response that his brain catches up with his mouth, and he startles in place expecting the villain to hit him. <clears throat> Said villain merely tilts his head at Izuku in contemplation, while finally stepping back from us. See you. She stumbles backwards, falling into the water with a muted splash. But the villain pays her no mind, as he continues to stare down at Izuku, First time, he says. A razor head isn't like All Might or Endeavor. There isn't any footage of him floating around. Yeah! Izuku bursts out semi hysterically. I, I know! A razor head marks. A razor head's marked so high on the unofficial underground ranking. There's a very quiet. The what? From off to the side, but. Izuku forges on. But there's literally no merch or photographs available or anything. I didn't even realize it was him when class started. I only put the pieces together when he erased my quirk. Which, granted, in hindsight, that's a bit of a giveaway, but... The villain snorts, and Izuku cuts off once more, bracing for a hit. 
nothing comes. So Izu, I need to, I need to turn my phone off. There we go. Nothing comes. So Izuku slowly continues talking. It's actually really impressive that you were able to figure out his quirk specifics in a single battle. I thought for sure that since you mentioned being here to kill All Might that you knew he was supposed to be here, that you must have also done research on I e Eraser Head before coming. Especially since you have the um, weapon to kill All Might, so all the masses of troops must have been brought in to deal with er Eraser Head, right? That's why you didn't care about leaving some mutation quirks down here when the mist was scattering the villains, right? Because Eraserhead would still have to use his quirk regardless, since he couldn't take any chances based on looks alone and just trying to erase a quirk that... Ah! Okay. Because Eraserhead would still have to use his quirk regardless, since he couldn't take any chances based on looks alone and just trying to erase a quirk and having that be ineffective might throw him off a bit. And his fighting style isn't really suited. Even without specific footage, it's not hard to determine that, of course, even I knew that when he was preparing to attack you guys. Uh, oh. Even without specific footage, it's not hard to determine that, of course. <laughs> Even I knew that when he was preparing to attack you guys. That's part of what makes him so amazing, though, right? That he knew he might not be able to make it, and that someone might be able to figure out his quirk and take him down, but he did it anyway to protect us. The villain looks away. Though, Izuku could swear his face is less pale than it was before. It's almost tinged pink in places, though it's hard to tell for sure what with the hand pressed over his face. Yeah, that was the plan. Couldn't have a razor head backing up All Might since Sensei wasn't sure how Erasure would affect Norma. The NPCs were to distract him so I'd have time to figure out his quirk before removing him from the play. W wow Izuku manages, compartmentalizing the tidbits of info and the casual talk of murder for later. Your sensei must think really highly of you to leave an experienced pro like a razor head to you. The villain preens at the praise, even though, even as he demurs. It wasn't even that difficult, he mumbles. And Izuku is struck by the thought that perhaps this boy, meh, person, isn't used to receiving compliments. Erizahed's hair lifts when he's using his quirk. That was horrible. <clears throat> Erizahed's hair lifts when he's using his quirk. Goggles serve to hide where exactly he's looking at, but... Even from a distance, I was able to count how long the hair was floating, versus how long it stayed down to calculate the cooldown on the quirk. The villain turns suddenly to sneer at Aizawa Sensei, whose bloody face has been turned towards them to watch the entire exchange. You hear that, Eraserhead? You need a haircut. He, he can't, though. Izuku mumbles, flushing at the sudden attention as both pairs of red eyes snap to him. Um, that is, a razor head operates primarily at night and tends to focus on the less well-developed areas of town. Staking out certain situations that he knows about in advance can give him time to set up nicely and wait, but observing from a rooftop every time would be to but observing from a rooftop every time would be too disastrous a pattern to cultivate, since thugs and baddies, since thugs and baddies would simply post a lookout up there, or be sure to keep checking the roofs, or simply keep their voices down and implement a silent mode of communication, which wouldn't allow a razor head to overhear. I've actually got a theory, though mind you, since I've only pieced it together and though my ah okay wait give me a minute. Okay. Though, mind you, since I only pieced together that my shabby teacher was a razor head a little over a week ago, I haven't really had time to fact check or anything, but I think that a razor head's costume is purposefully tailored to look shabby, 
since that, coupled with his long dark hair, lets him stumble around the deserted streets and collapse against alley dumpsters that he knows about will that he knows will be busy. Oh my god, I'm messing this up so bad. Okay, give me a minute. I think that Eraser Head's costume is purposefully tailored to look shabby, since that, coupled with his long dark hair, lets him stumble around the deserted streets and collapse against alley dumpsters that he knows will be busy later, and no one looks at him twice because they think he's homeless. The villain breathes, in a slightly awed tone. Of course, that's why no one ever sees him coming. He's been there the whole time. Exactly! Izuku crows, slightly enthused at having someone agree with one of his theories, instead of calling him stupid and yelling at him to shut up. And the hair isn't a problem, since then it's so dark it wouldn't be visible. Why does it float, though? A secondary mutation offshoot that developed to keep his line of sight clear? Izuku gasps. That makes so much sense! Especially when you take into account that the float effect isn't just on his hair, it's also on the scarf around his neck! That's why even though it's been around as a capture weapon for literal years, most heroes don't bother with it, because they need a way to exert more pressure to fling it around as well as constantly ensuring they have an end handy while they pray it doesn't get all tangled. A razor head, on the other hand, only has to activate his quirk for a second, even without a target in mind, and the weapon unravels itself a bit and hovers at the ready. That's such a great theory, that it's a spontaneous evolution to keep his line of sight clear. I kept thinking it was some kind of poisoning wave being emitted from his eyes that affected his immediate surroundings. Shigaraki Tomura. I did not wish to interrupt, but I must tell you that a student- NOT NOW, Kurugiri! The villains, Shigaraki's hands left, and Izuku can see Aizawa-sensei activate his quirk from here. But Shigaraki doesn't reach for him doesn't even seem to notice his favorite hero's reaction as he scratches lightly at his neck. We could both be right, he finally muses. The waves affecting his immediate surroundings are an evolution to keep his line of sight clear. He whirls around and crouches to Aizawa-sensei's eyes level. He whirls around and crouches to Aizawa-sensei's eye level. Well, a raise ahead. Did your hair always flirt? Was that something that came later? Aizawa Sensei blinks, even as blood continues to drip down his face from when the Normu smashed it into the ground. He looks dumbfounded? Confused, maybe? Not at the question, but the fact that Shigaraki's asking. Or maybe it's that he hasn't killed Izuku yet. Either way, it seems to take an inordinate... Either way, it seems to take an inordinate... I hate this. Okay. Either way, it seems to take an inordinate amount of time for his mouth to slowly start to open. There's the sound of an... There's an explosion of sound from the entrance, and then All Might is there, in all his glory. Shigaraki sighs, an obvious is ex... I can't pronounce words. Shigaraki sighs, an obvious exasperation. Ugh, now you show up. I'm not feeling it anymore. Norma. A huge black mass finally releases Aizawa Sensei's head and looks up. Cover our retreat. Oh, the cars have come. It's too late. I'm nearly done. <laughs> Norma screeches and leaps to attack as soon as All Might is in range. Kurugiri opens a portal, and Shigaraki starts to step through. 
This was fun, player two. No, that was not his voice. This was fun, player two. We'll have to co-op again soon. And then he's gone. A first aid kit sailing through the portal to land at Izuku's feet. And that's the whole thing. Cool. Oh, I hate not being able to edit this. I might I might actually edit it later and release a non a non an edited version. Oh, fun. Um, but I don't have time this week, so this is all you're getting, sorry.